Welcome to Dreadnought, a massive capital ships game that requires tactics and knowledge for battles across huge skyscapes and space against enemy players. The publishers, Greybox, have sponsored this video and they've asked me to give you a good, proper explanation of the game and its mechanics. If you're interested in the game, you can sign up using the links at the top of the description and you can download the beta for PC now or you can register for a beta on PS4 as well. So then, let's get into it. What is Dreadnought? Well, it's a tactical action game where you with a group of friendly players battle it out against others for dominance and the lion's share of rewards. The ships you'll be piloting are heavily customizable with different abilities, different tech trees, and different visual upgrades. Personalization is a big part of Dreadnought, and they come in five distinct ship classes. Now I'll go into more detail with these classes in a future video, but for now, artillery cruisers, destroyers, tactical cruisers, corvettes, and of course, Dreadnoughts are the five ship classes you can play as. And each of these classes have their own role, their own strengths, and their own weaknesses during multiplayer battles, and it's up to you and your team to work out what ships are needed at what time to keep the battle going in your favor. This isn't some fast-paced, twitchy flying game. No, this is much more methodical, much more deliberate, where knowledge of your own ships and weapons is just as important as how you place and move your ships about the areas that you're going to be flying in. Now, there are over 50 different ships in the five classes for you to unlock and customize in Dreadnought, but it's really up to you how you'd like to go about collecting them all. You might find that you really enjoy one of the classes of ship, let's say the artillery cruiser, and you might spend more of your time working on those and working your way through the different manufacture trees, unlocking these before you decide to move on to other classes. Oh yeah, I should probably mention there are manufacture trees in this game. Three different sets of ships designed by different companies that will offer different styles over one another whilst also sorting out all of the vessels into different tiers. The three different companies we have are Jupiter Arms, House Oberon and Akula Vector. All of the ships are classified in tiers 1 through 5 and that also determines what fleet level they go in. Besides the recruit, veteran and legendary fleets, there are also hero ships in Dreadnought. These offer something special once they're purchased, they come pre-configured with a set of abilities that are normally locked until further down the line, and in general you just have something super cool looking to enter battle with. Although they sound fancy, they don't give you a direct advantage during battle according to the development team. Within each of these ships, you'll have the opportunity to customise almost to your heart's content when it comes to weaponry and abilities, but you'll need to play in matches to build up enough in-game currency to unlock different items. Each ship will have a tech tree that you can work your way through, moving towards your end goal unlocking different things until you reach the item that you want to apply. Of course, the more glamorous items are towards the end of the tech tree, and you'll need to put in a lot of work to get there, but again, it's all down to you. You the player, and how you want to progress. Fair warning though, if you enter a match and come up against another team of ships that you haven't prepared to combat, be ready to see the respawn screen pretty fast. For each of the ships in the game, you'll be able to pick a specific secondary weapon that suits you and that complements the primary weapon, which is already locked into the ship's designs. You'll also be able to set up a primary module from a set of abilities to improve and modify your ship, and two secondary models as well that can mould into your playstyle. Don't forget, your playstyle is likely to change from class to class, so having these set up properly after getting started in Dreadnought is really important. You'll also have some defensive modules on hand that will help protect you and your ship if you make a wrong move or if you come up against an opponent in a tricky situation, and there are some area of effect weapons for you to try out as well. You'll be able to improve the performance of your ship by upgrading the crew that operates it. 
Of course, the entire ship is controlled by you, but the crew simply enables you to upgrade and improve specific parts of your ships individually. Now, these are called officers' briefings, and once again, it's all down to you and your playstyle as to where you'd like to bolster your arsenal. Now up to this point, I've done a lot of talking about the ships in Dreadnought, and of course that is a massive part of this game. You want to make sure that you've got the best ships possible, the best weapons, the best abilities, before you go into multiplayer. That will give you the best chance of you succeeding. But as I've mentioned a couple of times already, it's not just down to you and your ships. No, this is a class-based team game. You'll be lining up alongside other ships in multiplayer matches, and you'll need to fight together with other people to beat the other team. Combining multiple classes of ship to provide extra attack powers when needed, and filling in the gaps for each other, is essential if you want to succeed. No one ship can outmaneuver, outdamage, or outclass an entire other team. You really do have to work together here. Certain ships have abilities that complement abilities from other ships. So, for example, a Dreadnought class ship has the ability to boost jump forwards close to an enemy and then use its extremely powerful cannons. But the Corvette class, which is much smaller and a lighter craft overall, can then move up with the Dreadnought and help them finish off the enemy fairly quickly and then help the Dreadnought get back to safety. The Dreadnought has a lot of armor for sure, but it's also an extremely slow moving ship class, and therefore it needs to be aided wherever possible. So the Corvette can kind of be a distraction whilst the Dreadnought kind of moves away and tries to take some cover again. Then you've got the Tactical Cruiser class, which is probably what I'd call the support class really in Dreadnought. Lots of different ships that are solely built to help out the other ships on your team, more so than attacking enemies. It has the unique ability to heal friendly ships. So it's almost imperative that you have one of these guys as part of your lineup, if you want to keep all your ships alive. And if you've got fast moving corvettes that are zipping around all over the place, you're going to need to keep those guys healed up as long as possible. The corvettes really don't have a lot of armor and don't have a lot of health either. This is what I was talking about earlier. All the different classes have strengths and weaknesses, and when you mix them all together, they can come out in a much better scenario than if you were to, say, go into battle with all the dreadnoughts possible. You'd be moving around very slowly, and sure, you could take a lot of damage, but you couldn't really react to the situation very quickly. So it's very important to have a good mix of classes when you go into multiplayer. And speaking of multiplayer generally, I want to go into a little bit more detail and give you guys a quick rundown on the different game modes that you can take part in. There are four game modes currently on offer within Dreadnought, three of them are PvP, and one of them is an AI game mode. Starting with the PvP offerings, we have Team Deathmatch, Team Elimination, and Onslaught. The name for Team Deathmatch is a dead giveaway of how it works, but you need to work with your team to destroy as many enemy vessels as you can. If you die, you're able to respawn back in with no restrictions whatsoever. Team Elimination is a round-based game mode where you only get one life in one of your capital ships. If you die, you respawn as a small fighter jet. The objective is to eliminate the enemy team before they eliminate you. Best of three rounds wins. Onslaught is the all-out battle game mode where you fight against enemy teams made up of captains piloting their capital ships and enemy AI as well. There's a score limit that can be reached or a timer that runs for 20 minutes. And lastly, we have Proving Grounds. And this is a mode that combines AI and other human players in a team deathmatch scenario. The AI fills in slots that are not taken by real players, and it gives new players a chance to learn the ropes. And there you have it, that's Dreadnought explained to you in roughly 10 minutes. As I said at the start, if you're interested in this game, click the links at the top of the description for either PC or PS4, and get yourself involved in the action. I'll be back soon with another video, going in with a deeper dive on the five ship classes that you can play as. But until then, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.